So I am recording my reflections about theology after Google on my phone because I forgot my flip at home and I'm away at a conference. Uh, the Sharing the Fire Conference of the League for the Advancement of New England Storytelling. I'm on the board there and I'm here this weekend and I forgot my flip in Rochester. And so rather than wait even longer to record my reflection, I thought I would do it here. So that means no fancy graphics, no editing, and one take. <sighs> Reflections on tag. Um, I have a few small things I want to mention just to reference some other folks and then I want to um, hit a big thing. So uh, first and foremost in my mind, not that it's a small thing, but that I don't know what to say about it is white men. Um, I am both of those things. Um, and I just wonder, you know, uh, Bob Cornwall did a really, uh, he, he said it in a great way and I'm going to uh, quote him. Da, da, la, da, da. He said, most of us are white males. That may be due in part to our dominance in the blogosphere, but we are pushed to consider how to expand the conversation partners. And I think that phrase, dominance in the blogosphere, is a really interesting one. We dominate there, um, but that word d dominion and dominance is, is, a, is a, perhaps an apt one, but it also raises all sorts of questions. Like why, why is it that white men are dominant there? I was talking to Christina the other day about that, and, and we couldn't really come up with an answer. Is it because of modality, um, gendered preferences, but then do you want to be determinist about gender? And, and, and I don't know, but I definitely, definitely think that as um, you know, questions continue to arise around the kind of growth in, in church, capital C, we need to figure out where the women's voices are and where the voices are for people who are um, not Caucasian. Um, I don't know. Is it an evangelical, post-evangelical mainstream thing? Is it uh, a cultural thing? Is it a societal class thing? I'm unsure, but we have to start asking those questions. And we have to start asking those questions, I think, fairly publicly and fairly quickly if, if there's going to be really room at the table for folks. So that's one thing. Um, Another thing that I really I want to talk about um, is what I saw going on there, which was a really great developing of connections and friendships. I said in a post on, on uh, Jonathan Brink's thing, I really felt like what was going on that was powerful there was for us, a lot of the people who were there to get together and to connect with one another and have relationships. The presentations were great. I'm really glad I saw them and I got to hear from people and, and, and participate. However, I think that what happened outside of that auditorium over meals and over walks between buildings and, and just handshakes and hugs was really, really important. And I think it's very important that we keep that in, in mind. Um, I often uh, reflect on a quote by Stanley Kunitz, who is a poet, and a journalist once asked him, you know, what makes you such a great poet? And he said, it's because I love my garden more than I love the words I use. If I ever loved words as much as I love gardening, I'd become so self-obsessed with my language, I wouldn't be able to do the craft anymore. And I think that's important for those of us that are interested in technology and, uh, and communication and language. We can never let our own obsession with technology and communication and language become the thing that we do. It has to be about our own sense of calling into um, the work that drives us. We understand ourselves as ministers first and as uh, technicians second. Um, and so callings brings me to my um, final thought. Um, and Joshua uh, Case really, I think, did a good job of doing that on the final day and um, touching on it at least. That, that what is our calling? What is the missio day? What are we being called into? Because if we're just called into using technology to do what we've already been doing, well, then, you know, we're very close to, I think, building our own Tower of Babel. Um, and, and, I, and that worries me. Um, Ken Silva asked me a dang good question in his response to my video. I, I think it's awesome. He said to me, you know, I, I or he told me, you know, you folks are just re replacing all of what the biblical language originally meant with whatever you want it to mean. And that's a critique I think we have to take seriously. 
And we don't have to come down to the same place as Ken, who thinks that what we're doing is heretical, but we have to understand, are, is something new happening? Are we understanding it in a new way? And I would say that yes, yes, we are. And, and here's what I think we're being called into, Google or not. Not a return to something that was, but a call to something that has never been. I don't want to go back to doing things any way that they've ever been done. Humankind has never really done it really well, except for, you know, according to the scriptures, the garden. But we've never been there. So rather than us looking back over our shoulders all the time, I feel like what we're being called into is something new, an understanding of how God works in the world that has never come before. It is not a return to that which has been, but a movement forward to that which will be. And I think that is what we're being called into. So it's not about the internet, it's not about blogs or technology or videos, it's about figuring out how we can be with one another in a way that is holy and Christ-like. And it is to that that I believe we are all called. And if that's about Google, great. But uh, I'm not worried about the technology as long as it is that I'm being faithful and that the people around me are helping me to do that. And I can look to the fruits of the Spirit to see if that's working. Um, um, well, that's it. I think it's really important that we remember what it is we're called to and not get caught up on the, on the, on the medium. <laughs> uh, what are we supposed to be doing? What, what, are, what does it mean for us to be faithful? And, and let's do that whatever it looks like, whether it's cool or hip or technological or not.